All right, so back out here today, we're gonna put these uh, covers back on and move on with this. I mean, these things are solid now, man. Let's see if we can take a broke off rivet and show y'all. Uh, let me, I can push in it so much that my hand slips down and you're still only making a little uh, dot. So that stuff dried rock solid in there. Definitely not coming off. These tubes are definitely on there for uh, for the long run and for good. So I'm gonna get these put back on the motor and then move on to making the burn down tubes. All right, so Harper, tell everybody what we got going on. So we got our hose that we got from TKM, okay? We've got our end put on it already uh, and we are running it into the cowl. So I drilled these holes in the cowl using the drill bit or the hole saw and then it runs up in there. So I was using that tool to stick down in there and feed it in a little at a time to get it started. Um, it goes through the cow and then into the fresh air inlet. So the fresh air inlet is up under the dash. Under dash. Hey, look, some more original paint from the car, the green. Um, but that's where the fresh air inlet used to be for the 8C system. So both of them are gonna run um, in there and then they'll go back to the back. But the problem I'm having, Harper, watch out. So she wants to get in there, but she's not going to actually help. Um, so the problem I'm having is you got to creep it in a little that way because it's a 90. And then you got to creep it down that way. So uh, I've already got it started and run, run through. Got to have help. That's where you got to be thankful to have a wife, right? So as soon as she gets home from the grocery store and uh, gets her groceries put up, I'm definitely going to have to give her a, a hand so that I can push it in this way. And then she can kind of keep feeding it in that way because Harper don't want to do nothing but get inside there and play right say i don't know yeah that's all you want to do um so we went ahead and put some uh rub around the edge it's actually got double side tape on it to act as like a, gom a garment so that it doesn't you know the metal doesn't cut it this is all it is this is all it is is actually um, a piece of rubber that has 3m tape on the inside of it from um eBay. So it's pretty cheap stuff. You see right there, it's got 3M tape in it. It's pretty cheap stuff, but it's actually working pretty good whenever you throw a little heat to it, to the torch. It makes it really flexible. And then you can just, you know, bend it and press it down where the 3M tape activates and sticks. All right, so on these uh, pieces, this is where it's gonna pass through through the back seat. Okay, I've already done this one. You can see it's nice and just like up front. So when you first put it in, I just wanted to show you this. Uh, sorry if I'm echoing in here. I kind of fold it open flat like that. Okay, that's what it starts like. And then you basically, let me see if I can do this one-handed. Take it and fold it open, okay? And also I'm peeling off the coating that's on the outside. And then you peel off your red plastic for your double-sided tape, and then you'll stick it in there like that, bend it around so it's like that. And now we're gonna take the heat gun and we're gonna heat it up and then let it fold in. So let me see if I can do this all in the one-handed in the back seat. Okay, so I'm gonna take my propane torch. And then all I'm gonna do is just get it nice and warm. And that makes it where it's like crazy flexible. Don't burn your face or your car down. And then literally just take it and now your double-sided tape, not only is it gonna be flexible, but your double-sided tape is gonna stick like crazy. A lot of this double-sided tape is actually pressure activated, okay? I can't, there's actually a technical name for it, uh, initials, uh, like pressure sensitive activated or something. But basically you hold a little pressure to it and the pressure is what activates a lot of this double-sided tape. So just take it, once it's warm, just fold it, push it down nice and tight, hold it for a second, work it around, and you'll just see that it's just crazy. I mean, that's how it forms. So you have these nice protective pass-throughs that we can now take our burn-down tube, and look at that. We're going to run our burn-down through tube straight through here like that. So what they do is they come in the car up here, they route down, they go under the center console, got the loafers on. They come out the center console back there, 
and then they're just going to go up the bottom seat pan uh, and i'm gonna pull all the slack out of it obviously and then they're going to go into the trunk so my car does actually have a seat pan in it so it's actually supposed to get a back seat um i have a upholster guy that's supposed to build a custom uh back seat so he'd probably do a cutout or a piece for these to go through so my parachute cable actually runs while i'm in here it runs out the console and then runs uh, along the bottom and then it actually runs up the plastic panel into the the trunk um the seat pan the cover the bottom of the seat cushion should just sit right over top of the parachute cable actually and then these burn down tubes they'll come up the side of the trans tunnel right here and they'll just go straight uh into the trunk of the car so the cushions would actually be like one seat over here and one seat over here so the cushions are just kind of more for uh bragging purposes that the car will still have a back seat so it'll sit as low as it sits but it will also still have a two-person back seat now whether it gets used or not um it's irrelevant uh if it did get used it would literally be like one of my little younger kids for like a saturday car show or something but yeah because the passenger seat over here i got it out right now but it's actually on pins we went over that in another video i think i touched brief briefly on it and i'll go over it better when i do an interior video but yeah that's where we're going to run our burn down tubes too i just figured while i was in the back seat i would show y'all that how you do it and then i'd actually just show you everything back here all right so here's what we got going on i'm gonna show y'all again i've already went over this in one other video but i'm gonna go over it again in case you're new to the channel or you're just catching on so we're running the burn down tubes i just showed you how we did that one uh, i just got it back here to the back of the trunk and um, of course i'm a little bit short just like i thought uh, so this is where i cut it at right here and i will be putting a um an end you know an a end fitting on the end of this end and it will go into the back of the puke tank but i want to show y'all how we put these a end fittings on uh because i can't do it out there so you can contact tkm uh, i actually just messaged skinny uh, and was uh, chatting it up with him for a few minutes and um told him that i'm definitely gonna be short so this is all i got left okay so i definitely have to order more of this from tkm come monday uh, this is like, I think it was an inch and a quarter, I'm pretty sure. Actually, let me get a tape measure. That way, if you're watching the video, there's no pretty sure about it. That way, you know exactly what I'm using. Um, this is what it looks like, uh, one side done. So you can see it screws into our burn down tube, and then it goes nice and neat into the cowl. Uh, we'll be able to unhook this, you know, unscrew this at the racetrack if we want to, and uh, hook a vacuum cleaner up so it suck it out. Uh, when I, I'm probably going to order some extra from... TKM, um, you know, just so I don't be, so I'm not short. So the little bit I have left over, I'll probably make a um, another one that goes onto this that goes to the shop back uh, for sucking down, you know, the motor at the track if I if I need to or want to. Um, this is your AN fitting. It's just one off of eBay. The last video that I went over this in, I showed y'all. I think what I paid for it, or one of the previous videos, I showed you what I paid for it and all that. You can just type it in with eBay and look it up. So I had to play guessing games on this. So I'm saving y'all the time by not playing guessing games with you. Whenever I first wanted to do this project, there was like literally no information on obviously how to do this on a budget. Everybody just wants you to buy their, you know, $200, $800 kit uh, with burn down tubes, you know, detachments and all that. And I was like, not having it. I was like, I'm not paying for that crap for somebody else when I know I'm perfectly capable of making anything that anybody else makes. So that's how we got here where we made these really nice burn down tubes with AN bungs on them and AN fittings on them for the Coyote. So instead of going out and buying one and these, you know, are custom applications. So you can fit them to pretty much any motor that you, that you want. If you had aluminum valve covers, you literally would just weld this right to your valve cover instead of having to do this. But even if you were using like factory LS or whatever, you could find a way either using the panel bond methods that we went over in the other videos or welding to attach this to your valve covers. Um, and then you can order this from TKM or you could use pull hose if you want to. I try to go, um, a little bit nicer on my build and not, over the top you know so i mean i paid big money or not big money i paid fair decent money from tkm for this stuff this stuff is not as cheap as your lowe's or home depot pool hose um, but it's also not junk it's really freaking nice to work with it's really hard to cut 
um, you know, so I don't have to worry about it coming apart, anything like that. And then, you know, I, you know, cheaped out on all this and ordered all this off eBay, AN fittings. So also do like buying from TKM whenever I can, whenever I can afford it, because uh, they are the ones that put the motor together. And I like to try to keep the money that I can afford to keep with them. Um, with that being said, the AM fittings are 20 AN dash 20s. Okay, the size of this line, bear with me, I'm trying to do this one handed. The size of this line is going to be an inch and a quarter, just like I thought. Okay, so inch and a quarter. Okay, that's what this line is. So when I started doing research, I said, you know, absolutely, I refuse to just listen to other people and buy other people's kits. So I researched the approximate size of different AM fittings for tubes. And there's not a lot of clear information out there on it. Like you, it sounds like it clears, but then you have like inner diameter, outer diameter. And with a corrugated hose, you really don't know. So I gambled and purchased just one of these, you know, hoping that that would be it. So your AM fitting, you're going to take it, put it over your line like that. It fits absolutely beautifully amazing, a dash 20 AN. And then, like I said, call TKM up. Uh, tell them, shoot, tell them that you've seen it on the Paint and Paper Hustle channel on Courtney's car. Uh, especially if you're talking to Skinny, because me and Skinny talk all the time, so he'll know what you're talking about. Uh, so it's going to sit up in there just like that. Okay, so it sits nice and tight up in the threads. Uh, this will actually go up inside of there. You know, it won't be in the threads. And I actually will go ahead, and before I put this on real fast, let me take this back off one-handed without slinging across the room. I'll actually go ahead and cut this plastic off right here. So I actually go ahead and trim this up a little real fast. Um, you'll put this sleeve on and then we're going to put this on the inside of the hose. It'll go in like that and then it's going to sandwich it and pinch it onto there. So I'm going to get this in device. I still have not ordered an AM line like I said or an AM wrench like I said I would in the other video. So we're going to protect our AM fitting in the vise with a rag and then we're going to put some tape around the AM fitting to try to protect it. And then we're going to use some good old channel locks um, to tighten it down because I still haven't ordered a wrench. I will order the wrench so that taking it on and off the track, uh, we're not damaging it all up. I just haven't done it yet, man. Them things are not dirt cheap. So let me get this trim back, get this in the vise and get everything prepped. And then I'll show you how, you know, it goes. Okay, good. so we have our fitting with our line inside of it. Okay. And as you can see, we, I trimmed the plastic and have it where it's pretty much right up there to the threads. And I want to push it as far inside of there as I can. That's what worked for me on the other one. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But when you go to push this down in there, okay, and I'm probably going to stop the camera. I'm trying to hold the hose with my pinky. Okay, we got some threads started. It's going to want to um, push it out for a couple seconds until it gets locked in. So I'm going to set the camera down, and I'm going to wrap this up with uh, yellow tape and... Uh, I'm going to take my wrench, crank that down in there, and then show y'all what I got. All right, so as you see, I just put yellow tape around everything, took the channel locks, put it on it. You get the deal. Redneck, bam, bam. Um, you can see the hose if you watch. Okay, you can definitely pull on it. You can see me pulling, you know, a good amount of pressure. I mean, if you can see that in there, and it's not coming out. So she's locked in there good, which is what you want. Um, and this is an excellent way to do your burn down tubes. Uh, like I said, call TKM up, get you some hose, get on eBay, order you some dash 20s. And I'm gonna go ahead and warn you, they're not cheap. I mean, I guess they're cheap compared to some of the other stuff, but I think they're like $30 a piece, $29.99 or something. I go to, I went over them in my other video, but that's what you need. And that's, that's how you make a, or that's how you build a burn down tube. So that's the end of it. And then, like I said, we'll do the same to the ends in there. They're going to be a little harder to do in the trunk because I'm going to have to hold a wrench on one end and then put the other one on there since I don't have it in the vise. So it'll definitely, I'll definitely need to order the wrenches before I do that, uh, you know, because I don't want to be scarring it all up. But this will make it so it's easy just to screw on to the back of the puke tank. Being this one's going to be short, this stuff is expensive for me. Uh, my definition of expensive, maybe if you're building pro mods, maybe this stuff's dirt cheap. But I'm just an average Joe, and this stuff's expensive to me. So I'm going to use what I got, get it to wherever it gets to, and I'll put a barbed connection wherever it runs short and put hose clamps, you know, and then I'll finish out what I need, you know, with a piece that screws on the back of the puke tank. So that's, that's what it's going to be. I feel like that would have a pretty good seal also. I guess if you wanted to put some silicone or something, something up in there before you put this together, you could. But I just feel like the amount of pressure that uh, this thing 
tightens down on that I feel like you would not have a leak it here at all. So just my opinion, you know, if uh, I guess if I ever have a failure where it's pushing a bunch of pressure and, uh, you know, fluids through it, then I can definitely give you all a review on it. But it feels freaking amazing and solid. So that's that. I'm going to get this one put in there and start pushing it into the cow. And I'll probably need the wife's help again, uh, routing it into the car because it definitely takes two people. Or if you do it by yourself, it's a slow process. So I'm going to get at this and then I'll catch back up with y'all whenever I'm caught up.